Going off podcast story breakers, keep it real. We're here in some Chinese man's theater, and this brother is keeping it real damn ridiculous. This is bolimptious. It's the going off podcast, rap critic and news. <laughs> news, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing all right. Uh, I took yeah. I took that from the uh, first skit on that Will Smith album. I think from like 1999. Where it's like Jamie Foxx, you know, he wasn't like as big of a star, you know, so they kind of was like doing the the interview skit guy, you know, his name was like Keith B. Real. <laughs> I was presumably thinking of that because of the name of one of the bands we're talking about today, which is Chinese Man. <laughs> Chinese Man, you know, the French... <laughs> group of three white dudes what? C- what? Chinese man collectively what was go- what's going on with that name <laughs> it, this isn't some fucking racist ass Voltron <laughs> where with their powers combined fucking Captain Planet ass Chinese man what is that I don't know and it's like it's so strange I guess we could just get right into it <laughs> I mean we talked about people recording those mini songs to bring awareness to the current climate, to the current situation. How's that? There was a live stream for the organization uh, Stonewall In Gives Back, where it was an LGBTQ charity that was raising money for nightlife performers and people who just make their living, you know, at clubs and stuff like that, who, you know, can't work now so their whole life is kind of in flux they had a lot of big names on there Kim Petras was on there they had Rufus Wainwright perform and our boy fucking Todd Recall uh mentioned on the show before he did a remix of Nails Hair Hips Heels called uh Mask Gloves Soap Scrubs and which crosses over into another thing that is just kind of interesting and I think a lot of people are talking about life after all this and what the world is going to look like and how we're going to proceed. I think one thing in particular, these online concerts, Travis Scott, I don't even know what all work (laughs) went into this, but this animated in Fortnite performance where players just in the game could just go and find this performance and it's just a giant (laughs) kaiju sized uh travis scott uh performing a couple of his hits astro world comes to fortnite it just looked really fucking cool like it it was the the end point of all of those uh you know 80s rock concerts where it's like no one's here for the music it's just because the laser light show looks really cool you know what i'm saying like (laughs) you went from laser light shows to uncanny valley tupac to this out of this world travis scott and i think we've come a long way by the way have you ever been to the grocery store and seen the travis scott reese's puffs yes, what's I up have. with that yes i have his synergy is so confusing <laughs> i don't get it is, is it any is different that kind of popular or really <laughs> he's popular with the kids all the kids in the schoolyard singing sicko mode and eating their travis scott brand infused Reese's Puffs, apparently. 100 Gex, RC's faves, uh, through a sort of a music festival where it was a giant collective of people in their music sphere. Uh, Charlie XCX, Dorian Electra, a whole bunch of um, very cool, hip, trendy DJs performed this big concert festival in Minecraft where they built a whole stage, a whole venue... And they made their avatars in the game. So if you were playing Minecraft, you could go there and watch them and be in the pit. Or it was being streamed on YouTube and Twitch and all that. So they're pre-recording these bits. That is a question I had. Like, for the Travis Scott quote-unquote concert, like, it's just... Like playing the original songs, but like with a it's really just a record, yeah. Music video, like yeah, it's not like oh, but you actually can tell that like he's rapping this stuff. Like no, he's not doing anything, right? 
I, I gotta look this up specifically. There, there was a rapper who was doing Instagram live shows. It's been really cool is seeing these like uh, producer battles where it's like, oh yeah, yeah. One of the ones I saw was like RZA versus uh, DJ Premier. Holy shit, that was a hard one. <laughs> I don't even know what I was doing, but I randomly caught Questlove was on his YouTube, and he was just mixing, uh, it was almost like a fucking rap critic, uh, Station Head stream. He was doing, <laughs> he was doing Beastie Boy songs mixed with the songs that they sampled. See, that's fucking cool. That's what I'm talking about. That's, <laughs> that's being innovative. <laughs> so he just had the fucking turntables in front of him. He's just cutting, doing his thing, and every so often you just kind of see him look over, read a question in the chat, and just kind of casually interact with the chat. It's like, dude, this is easier, way cheaper. <laughs> yeah. If you could just opt to watch something for free on YouTube and not deal with uh, hearing damage, uh, <laughs> the financial hit you're gonna take going to a venue, any possible social anxiety you might have, so many things that could come from just th the kind of evolution mm -hmm. of an at-home live stream concert. And if venues want to do this to where, hey, we're gonna open it up to actually have, you know, physical come out to the venue concerts, if they offered a live stream like service for like a couple bucks mm. cheaper hey if you don't if you don't want to make it out you could buy an e-ticket i know a lot of wrestling shows do that a wrestling promotion mm. in charlotte they do it uh, uh like itv or something if you can't make it out to the venue people are there with cameras and they just live stream it so you could watch it from home that's pretty cool yeah it's not the same you know but like like i said it's cheaper and there's yeah. a lot of advantages to it exactly Chinese man, huh? <laughs> do we start with Chinese man? Or do yeah, we start with... Okay. Let's God, start this with is, the Chinese man. <laughs> this is a weird as fuck. No, it's not, it's not the Chinese man, dude. I'm oh, going to yeah, correct oh, you. Yeah, uh, d I don't mean to disrespect his name. Uh. <laughs> it's not the scorpions. It's scorpions. It's not the Chinese man. It's not the talking heads. <laughs> I, I can't believe I just put Chinese man in the same league as scorpions <laughs> and talking heads but here we are the groove sessions volume one by chinese man requested by uh giz mot it's g-i <laughs> capital z lowercase m uppercase z uh o t m k i'm sure they appreciated the effort I tried. <laughs> Group Sessions Volume 1 out of 6, my dude. Volume 6 released just this year. Mm. Chinese man keeping up with the times. A modern Chinese man, if you will. <laughs> what did you make of this? Uh, so, off the rip, as I was uh, listening to it, you know, the, the very first track comes in and you kind of get what this is. It's like, you know experimental lo-fi in a way where it's like you know it's, it's just these chill ass beats but like everything is sampling something from a different uh genre of music because like the stuff that he was sampling was like very like it's all like hip-hop weirdly western sounding stuff yeah. uh indian uh you know instruments mm -hmm. every now and then and jamaican like vocals <laughs> And like yeah. track 11, there's like a Chinese singing chorus or something like that. And it was interesting to me because, yeah, as I found out like, oh, these guys aren't even like from America. So like, you know, they're, they're looking at this, all of this music from kind of an outsider perspective. I mean, well, I guess like Indian music's not from here, but you know, you know what I'm trying to yeah. say. And as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about, um, you know about uh, the Dvorak 9, like, uh, New World Symphony? Have you ever heard about that? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when I was uh, when I was in school, I remember learning about, like, Dvorak's New World Symphony. He's really worldwide known for his symphonies. So, like, the ninth one, you know, everyone, you know, wants to know what he's going to do. And he goes to America because he's like, I want to, like, emulate, uh, you know, what, what the style is here and really, like, capture it, you know, because it's called, like, my piece is going to be called, like, From the New World, you know. So this is, like, the New World. It was harshly criticized 
criticized and uh, like frequently like rejected and hated on because the music that he was drawing from was uh, African Americans and Native American music. Oh my gosh! Somebody. Yeah, that's right. I'm yeah, mentioning so, like, this. <laughs> so a whole bunch of like you know the white critics were like, "What? That's not American music." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so funny how like this outsider person just like exposed you know these people for being racist and shit it's just like oh oh really uh, this doesn't count as the American experience to you oh interesting why, <laughs> why don't you count uh, the people that have been brutalized and you know uh, and destroyed by the American system why don't you count them among the experience oh that's that's, yeah. that's funny how that exposed that <laughs> but like so as I was listening to this album I kind of got that feeling of like is that what they're going for it's just like it's just supposed to be like this is the sound of the world <laughs> You know, like the yeah. sound of everything put together, and in that respect, I was kind of able to enjoy it in in a lot of um in a lot of spaces, especially when it does like they sample um a 1920s song or something like that and mix it in with like a modern you know jazz swing. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's really fucking cool. Or there's one song, there's like really one song that's actually like functions like a song where it's like you're uh it, it, you're hearing this like Jamaican dude chatting over the verses, and then when the hook comes in, it's like this western tv show from the 50s sounding hook <laughs> yeah like, what is this like this is so strange but it's oddly working <laughs> um but for the for the most part like i was able to enjoy the grooves it's only whenever like there will be a sample of something that just is just like weirdly contradictory with the tone of what the music is that mm-hmm. it kind of throws me off like there's one song where it's like this really chill ass you know uh chinese sound and you know violin melody going on and then like every now and then you'll hear like samuel l jackson go like the a furious anger from the lord and it's like i, I don't know yeah. if that fits this <laughs> i thought it was very strange this album did come out in 2007 by the way Mm. But the the movies they choose to sample from are from like an Edge Lord's favorites. Oh, definitely, from, like, fucking Fight Club, Fight Club, and Pulp, and Fiction. Pulp Fiction. All, like, all wow. the college, <laughs> all the college smart guy uh, movie picks. <laughs> the only thing missing is Clockwork Orange. That would have made the fucking <laughs> trifecta. My favorite hook on here, uh, Bunny Groove, track four easily the funkiest it uh, i wrote down that it almost kind of sound like an old incubus cut here's how you're gonna remember it it was the one where the fucking cowbell was just going yes, down just tinkling in the background oh, <laughs> fucking putting in that work on that goddamn cowbell <laughs> it had a really cool uh, mix of like drum set beat and fills with like bongos i love the sound of bongos bongos and cowbell on a fucking track mixed with funk riffs and it, i thought that sounded the best my least favorite, if I had to look over these, uh, surprise, surprise, I wasn't a fan of the reggae dub tracks. Look at you. <laughs> Something about three French white dudes named Chinese man uh, yeah. doing reggae. <laughs> and, they're, and they're not doing reggae. They're just basically, they're taking elements from different reggae songs and just cramming them together in what they, I, I don't know, some what I guess they would call, like, a reimagining, but it doesn't really come <laughs> off as anything unique or new. And the old-timey cuts are kind of hit or miss. I like the first one that that really, that had the actual yeah. like, person singing and, like, going back and forth. But, yeah, when they, it was, like, the next track where they did the exact same thing, it kind of felt derivative, yeah. I've Got That Tune is the one I didn't like. Um, and I think that was the second one. The one where it's got that I thought it was so fucking obnoxious and creepy. It's this it's this sample of this dude going yes. like, I got the song for the ladies. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I hate that laugh, dude. Get that the just fuck the off fact, there. Just the fact that it came back at the end. Ew. It's like, like oh, it. <laughs> it just makes my fucking skin crawl. I hated it. And the one song after that called You Suck Me, which... That was, like, a lot more provocative of a title than uh, the music was actually suggesting. That song had more Led Zeppelin samples in it than License to Ill. (laughs) I liked how the song started, though, because the bass guitar was just not fucking around. Like, it was in your fucking face. When when they go for it, they go for it, and I like that. That is one of my my more uh, favorable tracks, uh, You Suck Me Got, like, the second highest rating. 
And I did like the Beastie Boys, like, you know, ad libs going on in the background. Like, it reminded me of that, uh, that pizza party song uh, by Mary Kate and Ashley. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. The slowed down pizza party song where it's like, yeah. there's one kid who's like really excited and like normally you'd be like, yeah, okay. But like, because it's slowed down, it sounds like fucking uh, one of the Beastie was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that vibe. <laughs> Uh, and then what was it 808 cinco where it was like oh, there was yeah. western guitars you know you got the Jamaican dude chatting over it and then you hear the too many MCs not enough mics <laughs> and- they fucking drove <laughs> that sample into the ground right <laughs> And, and like, yeah, because there was a point where it was like, too many MCs, not enough mics. And then it cut to the Indian little, da, 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 <laughs> and that did not match at all. No, no. <laughs> my, I think my biggest problem with these cuts is they're too long. Because in a lot of the instances, what they're doing is interesting enough, not for five minutes, though. Yeah. Like, they go on for too long. Hmm. Like I, I thought Pandy Groove, uh, starting out the album, I thought that was pretty, pretty good. But yeah, I just wrote down like it's five minutes. Like it's interesting enough, and it's got parts throughout that I like. I think what this album reminded me of a lot is an album that I don't think a lot of people would say they fucking stand back in the day, but it was a big, it was a big uh, favorite of mine, uh, the Moby. The one with days go by and still... That one? Play was the album, and that song's from uh, Dirty Vegas. I get all those guys mixed up. (laughs) It's not like there was a lot of, like, direct personality from each individual DJ, you know what I'm saying? I can't fucking tell the Chemical Brothers from Fatboy Slim. (laughs) Right, that was the other one, yeah. Right about now, the The Funk Soul 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 Brothers. I remember listening to that song and just being like... It just like what finish the sentence right about now the fuck's old brother what <laughs> what was he doing <laughs> I remember there was a song for the longest time I couldn't remember what it was called the music video had this had a kid whose whole head was just a nose oh that was the um uh calling all free <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> listen I, all you motherfuckers <laughs> I found out out that, like, as I was doing the Remember the Name episode, you know, Fort Minor, like, the group that he was with, uh, uh, yeah, like, the two other guys that he was rapping with on that song, Remember the Name, uh, one of those guys did the rap verse on that song. (laughs) Oh, shit. And I mention this one every so often, and no one knows what I'm talking about. Uh, where's Your Head At by Basement Yeah, Jacks. that Where's Your... All this music that was like, maybe it was like revolutionary or whatever, but it's just like, it very quickly was like, this is the music that gets used in Mountain Dew commercials, you know? Yeah! <laughs> one commercial where I swear it's the most late 90s, early 2000s thing I've ever seen. It's the redhead kid from Sandlot. Mm -hmm. And, like, the big green fucking uh, You're Killing Me Smalls kid. Mm -hmm. And and the guy who I want to say went on to be a forensic scientist in one of the CSI series, maybe? They're doing donuts in a parking lot, listening to Rockefeller Skank by Fatboy Slim. Wow. (laughs) And they have a can of Surge on the dashboard. (laughs) Fucking Surge! And they're doing the donuts so the can keeps sliding mm-hmm. from one side to the other, and that's it. They're just <laughs> watching it slide, and it's just like, yeah, dude, don't even drink this soda. Just put it on <laughs> your dash and do weird tricks with it. Crystal Method, I think, was the name of the guys who did the uh, Call It Off Freak song. I think, Crystal like, Method, Was Fuck. it one of the uh, the bassists from, like, Rage Against the Machine, like, helped out make that song? It's, like, a weird confluence of people. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't be surprised, man. <laughs> like, all those groups at the time, they could all be, like, giant super groups. And, I like, it, you could tell me that fucking Dave Navarro and 
I don't know, Eddie Vedder was in Crystal Method, and I'd be like, yeah, sure, okay. It, it's like the Whatever best, you say. It, that genre was like the American version of, you know, like in Sweden, where it's like, no one really cares about like actual pop groups and stuff, it's just like a bunch of, you know, stuff that gets put together by studios and put out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I watch Todd in the Shadows episodes, and like, whenever he does an episode on like a band from Sweden, it's always like, these people didn't really know each other, this was just something that was thrown together by a label. <laughs> It was a very small window, too, from, like, 99 to, like, 2002. Yeah. This form of electronic kind of sampling. The, the, the big hits on play that you might remember. Mm. Uh, there was the song that went, like, Body Rock Now to the beat, y'all. The Body Rock Now. There was that. That was on there. <laughs> um, there was another song. Um, I mean, I remember all the hooks from these. You'd know them if you heard them. But the big hit was uh, Southside with uh, oh, Gwen Stefani. I remember Here that fucking music going. video. Yes. Yeah. Here we are now going to the West Side. <laughs> I remember just it's, listening to that song and be like, what is the importance of what they're saying? Like, it sounds so cool, but like, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> It's so weird because, like, it was the big standout hit and it doesn't sound like anything else on the album. Everything yeah. else kind of sounds like Chinese Man, where it's all just like. But the, the, the point I was the point I was going to make originally. Oh, right? <laughs> all the songs are like around three and a half. Some songs are four minutes. They're they're not five minutes, 18 tracks. The album is just over an hour. This song is, like, just at an hour, and it's only 12. So the songs are... They're a bit lengthy for my liking, for what this is. Like, it gets old kind of fast. Mm. I mean, I will say I, I did enjoy, like, in the in the sense of, like, what's gonna happen next? Like, there is... Yeah, it did keep it, you on your toes. Yeah, exactly. So in, in the sense of, like, just listening to it, we're like, what's, what are they gonna do? I have no idea. <laughs> it, it's kind of cool. Um... But, like, actually going through it and being like, would I actually listen to that track or that track again? You know, it's like, eh, it's cool. It, it, it would be something interesting to definitely throw on, like, if you're just, like, chilling, you know, smoking weed and need some fucking, you know, it, it, a, a more challenging lo-fi than maybe you're, you're typically expecting or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Giving this album my undivided attention, like, that's not the way I would prefer <laughs> to take this in, like, this is definitely put it on in the background. Don't pay too much attention to it. But yeah, like it rocks on its own. But yeah, I don't know. Just the fact that also this is like a collection of different recordings from 2004 to 2007, apparently. Mm. It definitely feels like what I had on my hard drive. Yeah, not a full cohesive project. Yeah, yeah. This is just thrown together compilation. Yeah. Uh, overall, I got a three for this. I give it a three and a half. Going on to our second request. Requested by Stalling Ryan Holder. Requesting. <laughs> Thank you, Stalling Ryan Holder. <laughs> <laughs> requesting the soundtrack to Mad World. Notable do, do, for being. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All around me are familiar ooh, ooh. video games. <laughs> I remember working at Circus City at the time, because this came out in 2009. Uh, it's a Wii game, notable for being uh, one of the very few mature-rated yeah. games. <laughs> I was about to say, like, wait, what? <laughs> this is a Wii game? <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember there being many mature-rated games for the console, so this one kind of stood out. And the point of it is, like... Hey, you're so many fucking movies. And like th this in itself is its own genre of the criminal or whatever is in what is essentially like a game show setting where it's fight for your life for the amusement of others, mm. criminal, like that that type of shit. Very the, um the uh, Running Man sort of uh, style of storytelling, you know. <laughs> running Man, yeah. Uh, there was a video game called Smash TV, and I think they even referenced it on this album, which was very mm -hmm. uh, surreal. Where, yeah, it's a game show, and you're just in the middle of a room, and waves of enemies come from every side of the room, and you got to kill everyone and collect money and shit like that. Very rarely, and I do not think this was the case for uh, Street Skater, that 
they actually, when you bought the game, you would get the soundtrack. Like, they wanted you to listen to this on its own. <laughs> and... <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> when... Because I was curious, I wanted to watch some gameplay footage. And I did so after uh, having reviewed all the songs and giving my ratings on everything, just listening to them on their own. Going back, I'm like, wow, yeah, these work really well in this game. And I can totally hear that, like, as I was yeah. listening to it, you know, just just that, like, uh, early 2000s drum beat in all of these, like, fighting video games, you know what I'm saying? Like, do, that do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah, exactly, like, I can They all hear, have the same driving beat. <laughs> yeah, I can hear, like, I can almost be transported to playing, like, you know, Tekken 3 in uh, uh, Paul's level, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, the thing is, like, I thought these all sounded great, as video game songs, but then I was like, for 2009 though? That's kind of dated. Oh, wow, wait, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I was thinking like 2002. <laughs> I, I was getting vibes of like, early 2000s, late 90s, like, Maybe like Sega Saturn. Wow, yeah, because I was I was thinking um some of these beats kind of remind me of you know there's a game I used to play called Busta Groove Two, and uh, you know it was a rhythm game and you know they but like you know they want to give you a legit song so it's like oh yeah you actually might want to listen to this song you know but because it's like made in Japan you know they don't really have the hip hop down so it's kind of like a it's kind of a like a interpretation of hip hop that's a little lighter but like all right but I still rock with it you know what I'm saying but yeah that felt more um mainstream ready in a way than this did that that's interesting like i said i would assume this came out around the same time not seven years later jeez yeah i didn't like this <laughs> um, i'm just gonna say that up front my favorite cut scrolling 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 <laughs> ain't that funny by sick yg and let's go by ox Ox kept showing up a lot. I was like, wait, is this just his solo album? What is this? <laughs> God, thank God it wasn't. I, I don't know if I could handle a full thing of Ox, because... At least the songs ooh. were short, you know? They were all, like, they never went past three minutes, you know? See, th the thing is, what's great about these and what's great about video game songs is because you never know how long you're going to take in a level. Right. They, they're kind of made to loop. Mm-hmm. So they're short enough so they can keep looping and keep looping and you're never going to really get tired of it because you're in the game and it's, it doesn't, it's not getting yeah, your, your brain's main occupied. focus. Yeah, yeah. My main question is, I don't know why these songs needed lyrics. Yeah, and just like the fact that they repeat them, there are so many songs with repeated verses where it's like, yeah, uh, but that was barely notable enough to be repeated the first time. <laughs> It's going to loop anyway. Why are <laughs> yeah, you repeating exactly. it now? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> this didn't give me the best vibe right out the gate with uh, Get It Up by Ox, which <laughs> that fucking I title... You know what are you talking about, Ox? Uh, yeah, that first of all, but I did like the jazzy little hook they had going on the banana. You know, every time they do that, I was like, all right, all right, that's cool. But what, what what's with the you, you boys trying to sound like Jay Z, ain't he? <laughs> if y'all ready to ride, if you're ready to fly, if you're ready to live, if you're ready to die, okay. If you're ready to move, if you're ready to fool, if you're ready to win, <laughs> if you're ready to lose. I'm sorry. What? What's going on In here? In general, get ready for the game. <laughs> See, this is one aspect of the songs I did enjoy. And this came up on our Birds of Prey uh, soundtrack review, where a lot of these songs mention the main character in mm. the game. And I'm like, okay, I do like that world building of the song is so badass and we're talking about how badass the character you're playing is yeah, like, that's you know. kind of cool i do like that like jack's gonna fuck him up like yeah i'm <laughs> totally gonna fuck him up like like i can see that that's kind of cool but beside the music which is still kind of dated by this <laughs> point like uh, wow especially dated by this point jesus christ yeah, i didn't see what yeah. year <laughs> i'm trying to think who was the worst I don't know if Ox was the worst just because he's come up the most. Yeah, I think he just he just is there the most, so he weighs on you the most. <laughs> the two songs that got 
flat out zeros for me, and I hate to report that there are flat out zeros. Are survival by sole purpose. Oh God, <laughs> the that speed rapping voice. dude, the, <laughs> the, the super rapper, yo, <laughs> and the fucking hook. S to the U to the R to the V to the I to the. We're spelling survival. <laughs> That is too long of a word to be spelling <laughs> out, my dude. Uh, and I didn't even think the instrumental on that was was any good, so there was no saving grace. And, unfortunately, the title track, Mad World by Optimus. I don't know what the fuck was going on there, but that, it was a mess. It didn't even feel like the title track. There was a later song that actually did feel like the title track, and I was like, wait, what? This one isn't it? <laughs> there are a couple tracks, like that one and... Another fucking one-off, Death and Honor by Wordsmith, where it's just, like, a barrage of, like, this sounds like garbage. Like, it yeah. doesn't sound mixed right. Yeah, stuff just sounds too much too is loud going on. Points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I thought Let's Go by your boy Ox was actually kind of catchy, so I'll give him that. <laughs> uh, I wasn't wild about Doja Rays. Wait, who, uh, who was that? He did crazy uh, Death Watch. Yeah, that's uh, the one. That's actually the one that I was like, I liked, and I was like, wait, why is it this the Mad World theme? Because he says like it's a Mad oh, World like on the song, and I think later on in the Mad World song he says like it's, you're on the Death Watch. It's like, well, which one is? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I also gave a really low rating to Come With It by your boy Roger, uh, Doja Rays. Uh, where you gonna go? Where you gonna turn? <laughs> when you gonna break? When you gonna learn? Like, all right. What, what did Fuck you think? In. What, what did you think about bandy legs? <laughs> you Man, don't know me. <laughs> bandy legs, proving that the ladies can spit whack shit just like the boys. <laughs> Dude, it's it sounded like an Eve slash No Doubt collab that got left on the cutting room floor. Uh, <laughs> Yo, I'm fly. I'm the female boss. I'm number one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not even trying. You can with see these. the badly rendered, you know, female character like like a, a Coco Bandicoot. You know, <laughs> I'm number one. She closes her car and drives off in a badly rendered car. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> at first, I was like, wow, y'all really got a woman rapper on here. Cool. And then, like, immediately, it was just like, <laughs> oh, this fucking sucks. This is no good. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Except for the few songs I mentioned, the instrumentals on these are good enough. And yeah. I think if they were instrumentals, I would have liked this a lot more. But a lot of the time, you start out with a really cool beat, and I am with you. I am rocking out to this, I'm vibing, and then you ruin it immediately <laughs> with some whack-ass bars that Just don't mean shit. Generic lyrics about, you know, horror chord that Insane Clown Posse could have done better. You know, about, I'm gonna stab you through the head with a lamppost or some shit. Uh, so bad. <laughs> when, I was w when I was watching the gameplay footage of Mad World, for a split second, for some reason, I thought ICP were doing the, um... There are, there are announcer characters in the mm -hmm. game. You know, like your, uh, like your celebrity deathmatch or mm -hmm. the pod race in Star Wars Episode One. You've got a couple guys giving the giving the play by play of what you're seeing, and it turns out it's Greg Proops and was it John DiMaggio and fucking Danny Cooksey is in the game from um, uh, Tiny Toons and Oh Wow Salute Your Shorts and to a lesser extent. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. <laughs> he's even got a payday. Everyone's in this fucking game. No, I fucking um, love John DiMaggio, though. He's that guy. <laughs> I, as soon as I saw that that was him, I was like, that just fucking sounds like Jake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like voice actors who they got great enough voices to where even if it just kind of sounds like they're doing themselves, it's it's good enough. Like, who is like, uh, Cree Summer? Like, she just has such... <laughs> <laughs> it's just her voice <laughs> and, and you know like every other like no we just just do just talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
H. John Benjamin. Uh huh. Yeah. Like or he just sounds like he he perpetually sounds like he just woke up. <laughs> Archer sounds exactly like fucking Bob, <laughs> who sounds like the coach from a uh, 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 home movies. <laughs> I got somewhere between a one and a half and a two for this one. I, I got a one point seven two. Yeah, I got a, I got a two. You know, some of the like I said, some of the beats were actually really cool. And if you can just ignore what they're saying, because like it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, it it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, man. like you can like, switch the verses on all of these songs, and you wouldn't be able to tell that. Well, maybe you might be able to tell the difference between a, the off beat. A, I'm the best. I'm number one. <laughs> there, there were a couple of parts that I wrote down because they specifically stood out to me on crazy by doja rays the crazy i oh, hated that. that that was kind of like you ever see the moon and it makes you go crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what the I fuck was that could appreciate like that it sounded different like it had a different energy you know than everything else that was happening up to that point you know <laughs> crazy <laughs> And I did like the um, ain't that funny with the, the, yes. the like the Chinese violin sample that was happening. That was so cool. But as I was listening to the track go on, it's just like you know. Whereas a Wu Tang Clan beat would be like, it sounds like this hip hop, you know, Chinese fusion. Like this mm. really does. Not, they sampled it, and someone made the beat a long time ago, and someone's just rapping over it. They're not really tying it in in any substantial way, and you know they didn't really make the the drum kind of fit in with it. It's just kind of like, oh, isn't it cool that we sampled something outside of the expected norm you know what i'm saying i was actually just about to mention ain't that funny because it's the only song to my knowledge or recollection that does any attempt of trying to be uh clever with the lyrics uh that's the one that mentions uh smash tv as like a nod to other video games like this one and there's a line a verse starts with the line jack jack he's a psychomaniac oh yeah which is a reference to Zach, Zach, he's a Lego maniac? Yeah! <laughs> and that's just obscure enough. Zach, oh, Zach, he's a Lego maniac. Put it together, take him apart. He goes to... A Puerto Rican Christmas, 9 a.m. Sunday. Dude, I used to love those fucking commercials. Lego mania, Lego mania. <laughs> And you just see the kid in his room just like building shit super fast. He's a Lego maniac. He's putting on the glasses because he's so cool. He's the coolest kid in school. He's got all the Lego sets. And, and the background, <laughs> all like the background of his room always fit like what was being made. It's like, I wish I looked in the room that, you know, fit what I was creating. <laughs> Fucking Jack, you and Arnold from Hey Arnold. I envy your rooms. <laughs> right. That about wraps it up for this week's <laughs> episode of Going Off. A bit of shorter than usual, but... You know, it's the roll of the dice with the albums, you know? You don't always get the most out of them, but we got enough out of them, and that's good enough for me. And if there is an album that you would like to hear us review on the show, it is so simple. That's ko-fi dot com slash going off, and you can request an album to be reviewed on the show for only 40 bucks. And if you... What a bargain! <laughs> What a bargain. It's a deal at any price. <laughs> and if you recorded an album yourself and you want to hear our, our uncensored, unedited opinions on it, fucking no punches pulled, that's 50. Yeah, get with it. Uh, and I'm actually seeing pe like people are still like donating to it, which is I am very grateful for during this time. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking scary out here. <laughs> I almost forgot one song, The Look Pimpin'. <laughs> oh, yeah. What the You're, fuck was that like, Look Pimpin'? Okay, I liked the verses and how he was flowing on it. kind of sounded like Sir Mix-a-Lot, but then, like, when he gets to the hook, when, it, when you hear the auto-tune on his voice, the way he's oddly mm -mm. talking, Look Pimpin', I ain't playing. In a minute, you're gonna be laying on the ground. Just <laughs> Man, I fucking said last week that fucking Token had John Cena rap. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this is that turned up to 11. It's all, like, empty stuff about how motherfuckers are going to kill you because you're living in a dangerous world. Which, again, fitting for, you know, what they were going for with this album. But, yeah, for an actual listen through. <laughs> We also have our link trees provided in the description so you can head on over and check out our Twitters and our YouTube pages where we post all of our other content. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Darren holding it down quite firmly on uh, Twitch and Station Head, banging on all cylinders. Exactly, G- giving y'all shit to giving y'all shit to do. You know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's what everyone is just trying to do. Exactly. Just yeah. Keep you- that content machine a churning. Exactly. So, uh, d- yeah, just to remind you, twitch.tv slash Rap Critical, and uh, you know the Station Head channel. Just look up Rap Critical on there, and. Um, you know, of course, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real rap critic. <laughs> you got so much stuff going on over there, so much productivity that every time you send me your audio, I always have to edit out from in the background that. <laughs> Dude, and I keep adding shit. Like <laughs> my link tree is so like heavy because I'll be like, "Well, I gotta let him know about that." And, oh shit, I gotta let him know about that. <laughs> Just fucking conveyor bells of just <laughs> right. YouTube videos uploading. Because <laughs> then I also uh, uh, uploaded the fucking uh, uh, set of drift on memory bliss of you on Bandcamp, which you can uh, check out uh, and you know you know give a dollar if you enjoy the content. You know uh, my, my acapella version that I uploaded where I did all the instruments and it's so funny. I was just reminded of. Uh, there's this song called Caravan that I remember discovering. It's from like the 1930s. And it's like mm. these, like these black musicians that are all like, you know, singers and they're like imitating the sounds of like jazz instruments to make their own song. Ooh. It's so fucking cool. And like you listen to it, it's like, this really does fucking sound like, you know, the harmonica and the types of, you know, trumpets and shit that they would use. You know, it's so fucking cool. And, and like it has a music video where you're seeing like all these people break dancing and stuff to it. It's so cool. Like looking at it, it's like, this looks like hip-hop dancing but like 70 years earlier like holy shit weird <laughs> yeah it's so cool look that up uh fucking caravan by the mills brothers look that up it is so fucking cool <laughs> okay and, and they're apparently like one of the predecessors of like doo-wop you know so patreon and kofi is the way to go if you want to help support darren in his living situation which i only can imagine is like emmett brown's garage <laughs> from back to the future <laughs> Just explosions and smoke and <laughs> I joke well, I joke about this because honestly, and I'm gonna get real here for a second, folks. Sorry to just maybe bring the house lights down for a second. Like, I don't know anyone that works this hard at their fucking YouTube shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. And just l- nobody deserves this shit, in my opinion. Like, like fucking Darren kills it so, so much. And I know, I know, we've had this conversation, and I don't want to embarrass you too much, but just like the "Am I doing too much?" Con- conversations. But I think, I think, I think. Am I trying too hard? Was I working just way too hard? I think you got the fucking balance, and you fucking kill it. And yeah, I just want to say you fucking deserve it, bud. And I hope. I hope this new year, and I hope these uh, these especially uh, uncertain times uh, bring you fortune, and uh, we all end up better on the other side of this. Uh, you especially. I appreciate that, man. And you know, I, I, yeah, I hope I, I hope we all end up better because of this. I hope there's a uh, you know less homelessness and shit uh, after this, and you know, we in general just uh, you know try to take care of our citizens, but. Uh... <laughs> you know, you know I, I was going to say let our content help you through this, and I, I don't think our content is going to help the homelessness problem, so that kind of makes me feel shitty. But, <laughs> but. I really like that. I know. I'm Look, kidding. there's things of varying uh, importance, some of which you can do something about it, a lot of which you can't. <laughs> I, I was sitting here about to say, like, oh, yeah, you know, lift your spirits, and then you say the homelessness, and I'm like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Look, I... More important <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and look, we're all, at this current juncture. We're all trying to evade homelessness in some capacity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but before we get demonetized, that's about it <laughs> for this week's episode of the God Off Podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out. Uh, if this is your first time listening to us, all of our old episodes are on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify. Pick your poison; it'll be there for you. And until next week, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, and this recording has been Volume 234 in the series of Unintended Indiscretions Against Microphone and Streaming Services. 